Two teams experiencing contrasting fortunes so far this season in the Skybet Championship. Home side Birmingham City sacking manager Lee Clark on Monday. Bournemouth, meanwhile, enjoying a good start under manager Eddie Howe. Birmingham City caretaker duo Malcolm Crosby and Richard Beale make four changes from their defeat to Bolton, which proved the last straw for manager Lee Clark's tenure at the club. Darren Randolph is back in goal after a one-match ban. Also back, Wes Thomas, Grant Hall and Lee Novak. Neil Erdley suspended after getting sent off in that game. Damari Gray, Kobe Arthur and goalkeeper Colin Doyle also stepped down. As for Bournemouth, they're unchanged from their midweek 3-0 win over Reading. Jan Kermigant serves the last of his three-match suspension. Our referee is Keith Hill from Hertfordshire, who's already been amongst the goals this season. He did the 6-6 draw between Dagenham and Redbridge and Brentford earlier on this season. The home side then will get us underway, left to right, Birmingham in their royal blue, white and blue. Immediately out for a throw in, Birmingham with Randolph in goal, the back four of Hall, Edgar, Robinson in grounds, Cottrell, Caddis, Gleeson and Novak their midfield four, and Donaldson and the former Bournemouth striker Wes Thomas make up the 11. Bournemouth, that unchanged team, Boric, the goalkeeper, Francis, Elphick, Cook and Daniels, an almost ever-present back four in recent months. Richie, Arter, Sermon and Pugh, and then top scorer Callum Wilson, partnered by Brett Pittman in the continuing absence of Jan Kermit. Daniels, infield early on to Pittman. Clip on the heels of Paul Caddis by Andrew Sermon. The first free kick goes the way of the home side, who... Under Malcolm Crosby and Richard Beal, it's hard to know where the future lies really for the Blues. Very much uh, temporary appointments to steady the ship. And, uh, lots of rumours about who may be coming in in the future as Elphick climbs on the edge of the penalty area. Birmingham threatening, Cottrell, the Welsh international. Now on the right-hand side, Hall and Cottrell, tight spot. Cotter nearly selling his teammate short there. Home form really has been one of the key issues for Birmingham City over the uh, course of the last year or so. Just one championship win here at St Andrews in 388 days, which is the sort of form you can see why they've had to make a change. Languishing currently at the wrong end of the Skybet Championship table. Elfric, the Cherries captain. And Francis playing with that protective cast on his right wrist. Fires it forward looking for Wilson. Donaldson beaten to it by Cook. Wilson again tangling with Robinson. Bit of space for Pittman. And it opens up here for Brett Pittman who slots it past Randolph. And Bournemouth have the lead here with just over two minutes on the clock. The Birmingham defence opened up. And Brett Pittman needed no second invitation. His fifth goal of the season. And Bournemouth strike an early blow and add to Birmingham's woes. Well, there'll be a real inquest at the back there. That was far, far too easy for Brett Pittman. The defenders almost moved in the opposite direction rather than closing the cherry striker down. A confident finish and not the return to the team that Darren Randolph was 
hoping for, back after suspension, conceding after two minutes and ten seconds. What a start for Eddie Howe's side. Randolph immediately put under pressure by Wilson, goodness me, Birmingham have started this game in sluggish fashion and the fans already making their feelings known. Bournemouth looking to pile it on, Pew off the left touch line. Donaldson hassling and harrying and working hard back inside his own half. Sermon looking to thread one through but it was picked off by Caddis. Sermon in with a firm challenge, that's the second time he's committed a free kick against Cottrell in these opening three and a half minutes and Ritchie intercepts that ball down the field and Robinson committed to the challenge and had to get there it was well timed by the combative Birmingham skipper wide on the right Francis Arta looking to switch play for Bournemouth Daniels and Pugh, a prolific combination down the left-hand side for Bournemouth over the last couple of successful seasons. Francis goes long. No change out of Robinson that time. Pittman pressuring Edgar in the penalty area. It's anybody's at the moment. Robinson clears. Cottrell helps it on. Now Wes Thomas looking to get on the ball for the first time against his former club. Pugh puts it out. Three years at Bournemouth for Wes Thomas. 11 goals in his 40 starts, but now one of the men enlisted by caretaker manager Malcolm Crosby today to do the business against his former team. Here is Thomas, who's a strong physical presence. Caddis goes long, over the top looking for Donaldson. Elphick there, Daniels away. It was a 28-month reign for the Birmingham manager Lee Clark, which ended on Monday. Only two wins in all competitions this season. And the club of this stature, certainly of course, regulars in the top flight, pretty recently as well do not want to be in trouble at the wrong end of the championship table. Thomas holds it up, Sermon in quickly. Again, sticking to David Cottrell very closely. Cottrell's quick feet, but he ran into Pew. Arter's ball, looking to put Callum Wilson away. Up against Edgar, and Edgar has a little tug at Wilson just outside the penalty area. And the referee has got a decision to make here, Keith Hill, he's gone to his back pocket. And really, it gets worse and worse for Birmingham. David Edgar sees red for a tug back on Callum Wilson. We've only played six minutes. Birmingham are one nil down and now one man down. I'm not sure how many complaints Edgar can really have. He knew Wilson had got the wrong side of him. He knew the slippery striker was about to bear down on Darren Randolph's goal. He had a pull back at him, and he's paid the price. And Malcolm Crosby really has, scratching his ear, he's going to be scratching his head, trying to work out how Birmingham not only get back in this game, but keep themselves in the game. Down to 10, there's going to be a reshuffle defensively. Bournemouth have a free kick outside the penalty area. And will Malcolm Crosby need to go to his substitutes bench to shake things up here? Bournemouth have got an immediate opportunity to threaten a second. Daniels and Pittman, and most likely Daniels moves away. It's Pittman, whips it in deep! Just beyond Matt Ritchie was coming in at the far post and Birmingham survived that particular skill. But the boos gather pace and gather volume inside St Andrews. It was a pretty toxic atmosphere even before this game kicked off. But now even the hardiest Blues fans have got to hope for a miracle this afternoon. Eight minutes gone, 1-0 Bournemouth, Birmingham with ten men. 
Cook ahead of Donaldson. Novak over on the far side goes down, picked off by Arta, and Harry Arta goes careering over halfway. It's behind the run of Pittman, but Wilson, I think, felt he was in an offside position and therefore couldn't play a part. Birmingham and the fans wanted a flag, it never came. And now Caddis, who slotted in at right back, a poor clearance, Pittman's shot, blazes it over the bar. And now Birmingham venting their frustration towards the assistant referee on the far side, who they felt should have raised his flag against Callum Wilson. So Malcolm Crosby is making a change here, and it is the former Bournemouth striker Wes Thomas who's been sacrificed here. And David Davis will come on to replace him. And those boos just seem to increase in potency. I'm not sure if the Birmingham fans particularly agree with taking off one of their strikers, but even at 1-0 down, there's such a long way to go. So Davis on, Caddis to right back, and Wes Thomas sacrificed. Donaldson looking to set Cottrell on his way to provide some Welsh trickery. Up against Daniels, the two number 11s in full contact. And it's the first corner of the game for the home side. Deep from Cottrell, way too deep. That corner pretty much sums up the first 10 minutes as Novak then sells the ball short for Gleeson in central midfield and the challenge in from Novak on Ritchie, the referee doesn't like that either and another card goes Birmingham's way, this time a yellow for Lee Novak. Well that's Birmingham's third red card in the last three matches by the way. Darren Randolph, who returned today, was sent off against Bolton. Neil Erdley is missing today's game, suspended after his red card against Blackburn. And now David Edgar will be suspended for their big Midlands clash at Wolves, which is next up. And what sort of shape will they be going into in this? It's also Birmingham's earliest red card, by the way, since Martin Taylor was sent off against Arsenal after just three minutes for a tangle with Eduardo back in 2008. Novak again up against Ritchie on the far side, but this time the Birmingham the former Huddersfield man gets away. Gleeson, the Irish midfielder, grounds off the left touch line. Gleeson into Cottrell, who's drifted centrally. Cavis, who is a uh, from the driving force from central midfield for Birmingham now finds himself farmed out at right back. As Sermon looks to pull the string, string spits it over down the left hand side, cleared away by Hall, who's moved into a central defensive position now. Grant Hall alongside Paul Robinson, and here he is on the ball now, the former West Bromwich Albion man to another former West Bromwich Albion man, Paul Robinson. Donaldson's going to have a long afternoon up front on his own. As Arta again looks for the direct ball, and this time it's Mark Pugh's trying to fritz the offside trap, and this time the sarcastic applause as the yellow flag of the assistant referee is raised. Here's Donaldson waiting for support, finds Cottrell. Twisting and turning against Daniels. Oh, he sent Daniels the wrong way. Cottrell teases it. Just too far in advance of Novak, who was coming in at the back post. Bournemouth really do keep the ball so well. They ping it around, they play it the right way. Long bounce of possession, patient football. As Pugh turns himself out of a tight spot and again keeps the ball 
in the possession of the men in red and black. They could go third today, by the way, if they can see their way to three points here and other results in the Skybet Championship go their way. Started the day in eighth position. Birmingham looking to pull themselves out of the bottom three as Daniels gets himself well forward. It's Cottrell who's tracked all the way back. Caddis under pressure, clears it away, only for a throw in. Deep inside Blues territory. So a lot of experienced professionals in this Birmingham team, and they're going to have to call on all of that experience and that mental fortitude to get themselves back into this game with only 10 men for almost the entirety of the 90 minutes. Pugh and Sermon link up. Sermon off balance, couldn't find Pugh with a return ball. Not sure what Malcolm Crosby's got in that notebook, but he could probably have torn up most of what he'd written pre-match as he summons Clayton Donaldson for some direction. Malcolm Crosby, of course, who famously took Sunderland to the 1992 FA Cup final. He'd taken over from his uh, sacked friend Dennis Smith. Was chief scout here, been here two years before being asked to step in in place of Lee Clark today with the rumours of the future. Gary Rowett currently right at the top of uh, most people's lists. Mike Phelan, former Manchester United assistant, also in the frame for the job here as well. What happens in the future we will see, but at the moment. It's Malcolm Crosby and Richard Beale who are tasked with the afternoon ahead. Birmingham at least having a little spell here and keeping themselves inside the Bournemouth half of the field as we hit the quarter hour. Canis's cross off Pew for another Birmingham corner. ball into the near post and uh, Donaldson was in there it was a flying defensive header in the end from a Bournemouth head which gives Birmingham a repeat option from the flag can Koch will find a blue shirt with his second attempt can it was Hall who got the first contact Francis under pressure towards his own byline and Novak ushers it out for a third Birmingham corner in quick succession again Hall this time with a powerful header this time past the post and Arta Boric the Bournemouth goalkeeper just barking some words of encouragement to his defenders but in the end off balance moving away from goal Hall not able to get it on time it remains one nil in Bournemouth's favour Too far, but eventually Sermon finds Pugh. And it comes backwards to go forwards. It's with the captain Tommy Elf. If there were calls for the Birmingham fans today to get behind their team in their hour of need, then an early goal and sending off double whammy really has taken the sting out of them. It's the Bournemouth fans you can hear who are providing most of the volume here in the West Midlands. Daniels was a bit casual. Cottrell looking to force an error and Daniels has to utilise his goalkeeper. 
actually didn't want it back there, Daniels, and Cottrell again pressures him. Charlie Daniels will have to look towards his goalkeeper to say, that's a lot. Referee Hill not happy with something. Wilson was strong ahead of Hall and now he's away using his pace down the left hand side Callum Wilson faced by Robinson Hall managed to regain his ground and clears it away Simon did seem to give Cotter a, a slight nudge referee had a good look and now space for Callum Wilson Arthur again looking to the right hand side Francis overran it just about managed to retrieve it Serma, great feet away from Cotter, beautiful stuff. And now to the left and Daniels. Opportunities in the middle here. Daniels pulls it back and cleared away by the substitute Davis. And out for Bournemouth corner, there was some lovely interplay in there. Andrew Serma with some delightful footwork. Bournemouth don't hang around. It's with Pugh again. Driving to the top of the box, Mark Pugh will shoot. Drags it past the post. Birmingham only won two of their home games last season in the championship. It was the uh, the main reason they found themselves in the sort of trouble that saw them escape relegation on the final day of the season, just on goal difference. They won nine away games compared to their two at home as Elphick has to clear it away. Daniels helps it on. Last season, Birmingham took 14 points at home and 30 points away, which is uh, a real imbalance in what you'd expect if you compare that to Bournemouth. Their 10th place finish was based on 38 points at home and 28 away, which is more of the sort of balance, I guess, you'd expect from a, a team weighted in home favour. So Birmingham really have got to get it sorted on their own patch as we reach 20 minutes played and Cottrell wins a throw in by the flank. Birmingham, to be fair, have uh, regained some composure here from that early Goal from Brett Pittman, followed very quickly by the sending off of David Edgar. I don't work that throw in too well though, and it's cleared up to halfway where Callum Wilson's waiting for some support, but he won't get an opportunity to use it because he's been flagged offside. Driven into a crowded area, it falls for Cottrell. Oh, not a very good ball from Cottrell, gave grounds, absolutely no grounds to be able to keep that in. Malcolm Crosby on the right, Richard Beal on the left, cut frustrated figures in the early stages. Sermon just having to correct himself on the edge of the penalty area. Pittman He's quick away from Donaldson who's going to have to get through a lot of work the lone striker helping his team out today not just chasing balls forward and winning them in the air he's going to have to drop back into his own half as well With the lone striker in the 10 a quarter of the way through this Skybet Championship clash at St Andrews Birmingham nil Bournemouth 1 Cook to Sermon, who's seen an awful lot of the ball, and Sermon over the top for Callum Wilson, an opportunity for Wilson, denied by Randolph, and then Pittman with the rebound wide. Huge opportunity, it just wouldn't quite come down for Callum Wilson, it wouldn't quite fall for him. And from the resulting drop down, Brett Pittman would feel he should have hit the target with the goalkeeper struggling to regain his position. It went wide, it remains just 1-0.
Had to give it some work to you there by Sermon's loose pass, but Manish should nudge it out to Francis. And now Matt Ritchie, who hasn't had an opportunity to see a lot of the ball out on that right hand side. Matt Ritchie, most of Bournemouth's players uh, been central or down the left using Daniels or Pugh. destructive player Matt Ritchie can be when he gets the ball at his feet some nice control by Pugh who has kept that in with almost with his neck looking to outstrip Caddis drives in low the shot in the end came in from Pittman on the run and again wasn't able to hit the target and Bournemouth will be encouraged by the way they've pretty effortlessly managed to get in behind Birmingham there as the Blues reshuffle back four continue to make defending look pretty difficult Pittman's had a couple of opportunities in next to no time, but hasn't taken either of them to add to his early goal. fourth team that Bournemouth have come up against already this season in the championship who haven't had a permanent manager they face Leeds they face Cardiff they face Bolton all of whom have had changes of manager already this season and now Birmingham so they are becoming past masters at taking on teams in a bit of flux Cottrell away from Sermon who had a bit of a nibble Sermon might be slightly fortunate to get away without a yellow card there, given that uh, Novak picked one up for a similar trip on Richie early on. I think uh, Grant Hall is making a very, very much snap point to referee Keith Hill that he felt Sermon could well have been booked for that infringement. Cottrell, I don't know if he's trying to get Callum Wilson booked. Doesn't look that way, kicking it against the Cherry striker, but referee Keith Hill not having any of that. Poor ball from Cottrell, easily cleared away by Pittman. It's a nice turn from the Welshman. Oh, missed by Steve Cook, it falls for Clayton Donaldson, a spectacular overhead kick of Bournemouth, the first real moment at the back, and Steve Cook holds his hands up, completely misjudged that through ball bounced over his swinging foot and Clayton Donaldson possibly surprised by Cook's error was unable to take advantage Artur Boric, the Bournemouth goalkeeper it's his seventh game on loan from Southampton the 34 year old he was slipping down the pecking order of course at Bournemouth's uh, South Coast neighbours since the arrival of Fraser Forster, both former Celtic goalkeepers. Lee Camp, of course, had started the season between the sticks for Bournemouth, but he lost his place after the home defeat to Leeds last month. Slightly challenge came in central midfield there from Gleeson, but Arter saw it coming. And now here's Daniels on the left. Pugh faced by Caddis. Still manages to find Harry Arter. Trying to shake off the substitute Davis. Now Elphick coming through. Good strength to hold off Donaldson, who was having a tug at his shirt, but it breaks down. And then Birmingham almost played himself into trouble as Wilson tries to pickpocket Davis, but then in the end it's taken away by Hall. And Francis finds his goalkeeper. Bournemouth have a very strong record here at St Andrews. They've never lost here in any competition. Four wins and three draws. Winners by four goals to two here in the championship last season. They were actually 3-0 up after half an hour in that game. So they are past masters at starting games quickly. A couple for Lewis Graben in that game. And one for Matt Ritchie as Donaldson and Steve Cook tangle. Which way is the decision gone? It's gone the way of Birmingham. 
It's going to be a card, actually, for Steve Cook. So while Sermon might have been fortunate a moment ago, Steve Cook does not escape the pencil. First Bournemouth player into referee Keith Hill's notebook. A busy start for the referee, disciplinary-wise. We play 28 minutes, a red card and two yellows. <laughs> Caddis drives it long. Hall was in there. Will it run for Donaldson? Snapshot is blocked very well by Steve Cook sliding in, and Cook gets a second attempt to clear, and Cook made up there for his mistake a moment ago. As Donaldson had a sight of Arta Boric's goal, Bournemouth defender was in the way, and that cross is overhit. And Bournemouth's clean sheet is preserved, and Boric bowls it for Pugh on his way. Cottrell getting back, and Cottrell did enough just to nudge Pugh off balance. And he saw that attack came to nothing. Cook finds Pittman in a bit of space now, and Bournemouth with opportunities as Wilson nips in behind his man. Wilson left side, and the shot lacked venom and conviction, really, but Grant Hall did enough to put it behind for a corner. And again, Bournemouth from next to nothing, carving Birmingham open, and again, not hanging around with the corner. Looking to catch Birmingham while they're disorganised. It's with Pugh. Now it's Daniels. Ritchie tried to lay it off. it goes to the far side now and Simon Francis who hasn't had too much opportunity like Matt Ritchie to get on the ball in an attacking sense and Ritchie there when he did get a chance let it run under his foot but Birmingham's clearance is poor and Bournemouth will come again with Sermon quick interplay involving Pittman and Arter Sermon with a Beautifully accurate ball out to Mark Pugh, who for a moment was one-on-one -on -one against his fullback Caddis until Cottrell came across to double up. And again, Pugh not able to make anything happen there. Five points the gap between Bournemouth starting the day in eighth and Derby, who've had a fantastic season, of course, under Steve McLaren. Just one loss in all competitions. Bournemouth actually lost at Derby last month. There is an opportunity today to get into the top three or four if they can do the job here, which they will be fully expecting to do against the ten. 13 minutes until the interval. Francis forward to the edge of the box where the challenge from Robinson on Arta was firm but fair. Two Bournemouth players took each other out there and then Sermon nudges Cottrell off it. And I think Andrew Sermon will have to get a yellow card now. There's no way he can escape again. And sure enough, the card is out. friendly and relaxed guy off the field Andrew Sermon fierce competitor on it and there's no way that even his charm could talk his way out of that yellow card from referee Hill as the ball goes long from Robinson Caddis trying to inject a bit of emphasis into Birmingham's game with that ball forward towards Donaldson who holds it up under close pressure does well there former York City man. Signed in the summer, of course, from Brentford after his 18-goal haul in League One last season, Clayton Donaldson, but that's gone out of play. It'll be a Bournemouth throw. Goals have been rather hard to come by for Birmingham this season. Donaldson is the top scorer with three. Caddis and Cottrell have got a, a brace each. As Davis 
cuts out Sherman's intended pass. And here's Novak on the left-hand side. Davis stayed left, but Ritchie tracking back to do his defensive work has thwarted that Birmingham attack, and he, in the end, wins Bournemouth a goal kick to the applause of the Bournemouth fans situated behind that goal to our right. Hasn't seen too much going past him so far, Arta Boric, the big man. Three clean sheets in the five league games that Boric has played so far. There wasn't any desire from the centre-halves there to receive the short ball, Arta Boric not having it. Pittman with a good flick, Wilson will chase. Caddis will try and usher it out, Caddis wins the free kick. Climbed by Cook from Randolph's clearance. Robinson, the captain. Back to the Irish international Randolph, who makes a complete mess of that clearance. And Callum Wilson might take advantage. He's trying to go around the goalkeeper. The chance is still there. And Callum Wilson makes it too. Birmingham and their fans are furious. Again, they wanted a flag. Randolph's clearance was a disaster. Wilson's finish was clinical. And with 10 minutes until half time, Bournemouth against the 10 men go two goals clear. Not the first time this afternoon that Darren Randolph hasn't connected with the clearance as he would have liked. He got away with one earlier on, but unfortunately for him, that time straight to a Bournemouth player. Wilson was lurking in a suspicious position without seeing it again, but certainly Birmingham making their feelings known. The flag never came, and Wilson gobbled up the opportunity, and he's into double figures for the season. The man from the Mess Midlands, of course, Came from the club just down the road from here, Coventry. And I'm sure he'll have enjoyed scoring here. I'm sure plenty of his friends and family in that Bournemouth away end. And Birmingham's problems deepen. They're two behind with 10 men. Davis looking to make progress into the penalty area. Elphick away. Certainly showing no signs today of missing their uh, target man, Jan Kermigan, who serves the last of a three-match suspension today. Robinson under pressure from Wilson. Now Randolph immediately with another chance to clear. And that one is markedly more successful. And Donaldson and Elphick got himself in a bit of a tangle. I think Donaldson's hurt himself after that uh, coming together with Elphick. He did fall from quite a spectacular height there, Donaldson. But he's OK. He's a tough character, that's for sure. Just needed a moment to gather himself. Donaldson immediately back into the fray. Daniels and Cottrell, it's been a good battle down this near touch line in this first half as Davis can't find a teammate with that one. Maybe 
can see from these swathes of empty blue and white seats around St Andrews, the uh, the general feeling about the current situation here after the Lee Clark regime. 30,000 this uh, famous old stadium holds, but crowds have been around the 14 or 15,000 mark. Not even half full. Bournemouth well supported today from the south coast. And their fans certainly getting value for money. Their side have a two-goal lead just over six minutes before the interval. Davis and then Robinson getting himself in trouble and Matt Ritchie with a delicate finish and Bournemouth have three and again Birmingham really only had themselves to blame Matt Ritchie's had a quiet game but when he got the opportunity there as Birmingham defenders left the ball to each other he stole in Matt Ritchie is off the mark for the season with his first goal since Easter Monday and Birmingham now find themselves three goals down A real sense of after you, Claude, there from the Birmingham defenders. As Davis and Hall and Robinson between them all got themselves into a mix. But Matt Ritchie, as we say, has not had the busiest of afternoons on that right-hand side in terms of being an attacking creative force. But when he got his chance, he took it. You can see from his celebration how pleased he was to end that drought since Easter Monday. Birmingham have got to see this through to half time without any further damage. Three down with ten men. This has potential to turn into a, an embarrassing afternoon. And a big test for the vastly experienced Malcolm Crosby. And his uh, sidekick Richard Beale as caretaker duo with their half time team talk. To maintain some respectability. Can they make something happen before half-time? Here's Jonathan Grounds, storming forward. Slips on the edge of the penalty. Well, it looked like he slipped, but the referee claims that Sermon clipped him, and Andrew Sermon will need to be slightly careful. He's been uh, on the wrong end of a few decisions so far today. But now Birmingham have a set-piece opportunity. Cottrell is already shaping as if he fences a crack at goal here. So Koch will have a direct crack, Bournemouth have set them all up as if he's going to, four of their big men are in it. Again, the, the rather pernickety referee Keith Hill, who's been having the ball move back inches on occasions. Was Koch going to clip it? He's going to go for goal himself and that is never going to threaten Arta Boric. A tame effort, almost an apologetic free kick from David Koch. Arthur Boric continues to have a sedate and comfortable afternoon between the posts for Bournemouth. Mark Pugh. Bournemouth hunting a fourth here before the interval. Pittman who scored the first on three minutes. Pugh and now Daniels. Pittman again, he has got a long range shot on him, but the option wasn't there on that occasion. Harry Arter can let them go as well. Steve Cook taking the opportunity to sneak forward from centre-half into the Birmingham half of the field. Bournemouth fans are laying as their side 
extend this bout of possession. As the 10 of Birmingham chase shadows, and in the end it was Harry Arter's ambitious ball to the far flank that was just one step too far. Birmingham happy just to get it clear and put it out. They really need to get to half-time here, Birmingham. Without any further damage, and so they can regroup, rethink. The chant of Eddie Howe's Barmy Army. And then he's already tasted two promotions, of course, the 36-year-old. And his side have uh, 90 more seconds in this first half to try and threaten that Birmingham goal further. They lead 3-0. Cottrell though on the right here for Burma. Opportunity for Gleeson to swing one in, flicked away. Now Matt Ritchie finds some space, but couldn't get it onto his stronger left foot, but he releases Francis. Francis goes long. Well, Pugh will chase every lost cause towards the flag. Can he keep it in? No, he can't. They don't come a lot more wholehearted than Mark Pugh. If anyone was going to continue to chase that one down, it would be him. Final minute of the half, Birmingham now winding down that clock. Just can't really get out to any notable effect here, Birmingham. As Bournemouth play the ball around so nicely, really making Birmingham work hard to get it back. Sermon's been the fulcrum for Bournemouth, the focal point. He's the one that Bournemouth looked to give the ball to to make things happen. Here he is again. Wilson just about keeps it in, does he? Ronsman keeps the flag down. No, it eventually does go up. It's been a pretty tough afternoon so far in terms of uh, how the Birmingham fans have treated him. The assistant referee on that far side. As we begin three minutes added on, which is possibly not the number that Birmingham were hoping to hear. Bournemouth have traditionally been a very good first half team this season. They've only been behind once at half time this season in their 13 league games, and that was against Blackburn. So traditionally, opening 45s have been a solid proposition for Eddie Howe's side, and they've been more than solid this afternoon. They've been ruthless. They lead 3-0. There's a foul there by Gleeson on Pittman. Daniels again, and Pittman, Arta, Francis found that ball behind him, Richie goes scooting on outside him, but that option is ignored. Long from Elphick, off the head of Callis, who just about has enough to get it back to his goalkeeper. Final minute of the added three. Arta, what a ball, that's cut through everybody, and Callum Wilson is away again here. Robinson has to be careful, and Wilson's hit the post. And Birmingham, the width of the goal frame from going 4-0 down, and much like Brett Pittman with his third-minute goal when it was a straight ball down the centre that left the Birmingham defence found wanting, 
pretty much identical again. Arter's ball beat everybody, and Wilson so close to making it four. Well, Keith Hill, the referee, brings Birmingham's first half misery to a close, and the booze audible around St Andrews. Malcolm Crosby wanders off with plenty to consume himself in his half-time team talk. Things were bad enough already for Birmingham, having sacked their manager earlier this week, but Brett Pittman put Bournemouth on the way after three minutes. David Edgar sent off on seven for pulling back Callum Wilson. Wilson himself made it two, Matt Ritchie made it three, and Wilson so close to making it four. Half-time is Birmingham nil, Bournemouth three. Those Bournemouth players very content, I'm sure, with what they produced in the first half to hold this 3-0 lead going into the second half, and Birmingham will react. Michael Crosby throwing on Callum Riley here. He's going to come on and replace Stephen Gleeson for the second half. Second substitution already then, with David Davis having come on in the first half. So Bournemouth unchanged for the second period. Boric, Francis, Elphick, Cook, Daniels, Richie, Arter, Sermon and Pugh, and then Pittman and Wilson, who have a goal each. Birmingham then have Randolph, Caddis, Hall, Robinson and Grounds, Cottrell, Caddis, Riley, Novak and Donaldson. Referee Keith Hill, back in the final checks. And we're underway then. With Bournemouth looking to pour on the misery for Malcolm Crosby. I wonder what Crosby and Richard Beale have managed to reorganise or instill in their team for this second half. France is looking for Callum Wilson early on, but across comes Robinson. Now to play it goes. Bournemouth in this second half, attacking the end at which their hands fans are housed here at St Andrews you can hear them making that noise that I'm sure will continue as the soundtrack to the second half if it's the team continue to produce the sort of performance I guess against 10 men you're expected to produce as Harry Arta finds some space in central midfield Francis Pittman and Sermon. Daniels has stayed forward from left fullback. Looking for Pew down the line. Pew was illegally nudged over by David Davis, according to the referee. And Bournemouth have an immediate set piece opportunity. They haven't hung around with most of the set pieces, but that was just too quick as Donaldson was able to pinch it from Arta. And then Birmingham really all got a bit tight and a bit congested. And Bournemouth have wasted that opportunity. Birmingham have the chance to clear. We spoke in the first half about Birmingham's home woes. Just one championship win here at St Andrews in 388 days. Only one home win since the 1st of October last year. That run stretches to 24 matches, and it doesn't look like being curtailed today as Daniels had an opportunity to get himself into the penalty area, but Pugh's ball was just behind him. But Birmingham, again, defensively in disarray, and present Bournemouth with an opportunity to keep the pressure on. Ariata and Andrew Sermon have enjoyed a lot of space as you'd expect against 10 men in that central midfield as Birmingham sit off. Arter and Pittman linking up. Here's Arter again. Francis with an opportunity to cross. Dinks one of the back post just too far beyond Wilson. But again, Birmingham's outboard is poor and immediately they're back under pressure. Daniels. No one at the back post for him on this occasion. And Grounds will have a chance to clear, but Ritchie thwarts him.
Birmingham's confidence is so low that they just so far are not executing the basics well enough and again they find themselves under pressure there's a handball there against Robinson Bournemouth as Wilson looked to get away they've got themselves an opportunity here to make an early addition to the score in the second half Matt Ritchie set piece wizard but possibly not an ideal angle for him centre-halves have come forward Steve Cook Tommy Elphick both lurking in the penalty area Simon Francis as an option to the right tap to Arta back it goes to Ritchie it was a training ground set piece one but it was read by Caddis and it's cleared away Sermon the last man back for Bournemouth and they reorganize themselves Eddie Howe is known for his cute set pieces from the training ground that's a great ball from Boric the goalkeeper and now it's Pugh Bournemouth have got numbers forward here it's beyond Pittman breaks to the edge of the box Francis will put it back in no he won't he'll use Ritchie he might swing one towards the far post, Ron Robinson with the header, breaks down the box, Pittman and Wilson got to get there, and in the end scrambled behind by Randolph. Real pinball in the penalty area, two or three half chances, Harry Arter was right in the mix as well. Corner taken quickly as is Bournemouth's wants. Pew no way past Cottrell this time. Birmingham with a chance to come away but again Davis is slack and Bournemouth have got it back Arter there ahead of the substitute Riley Pugh left corner Daniels just outside not a great ball from Pugh and that allowed Caddis the chance to slide in and Riley will clear it away and it's trying to set Donaldson on the run but Elphick tidies up Six minutes gone in the second half, still 3-0 in Bournemouth's favour against the Birmingham 10 men after David Edgar's early sending off. Goals for Pittman, Wilson and Ritchie in the first half as Novak looks to twist and turn his way out from inside the Birmingham half. Birmingham with a, a battle of possession themselves here, it's not something they've enjoyed too often. It's over on the right with Cottrell who's got Caddis scooting up for support. Cottrell trying to take on Pew, he's trapped all the way back towards the flag. Throw in taken with no time wasted. Blocked by Pew again. Well, it's a, a very long way back from three down with ten men, but if Birmingham could fashion something here, if they could get themselves a goal, we just instill just a bit of life into at least the crowd as Caddis is cross and Donaldson goes down after a real tangle with Elphick and the referee has pointed to the spot and talking of Birmingham having an opportunity to get a goal they have a great chance now from the penalty spot as Tommy Elphick is booked for hauling down Clayton Donaldson and Birmingham have a penalty they want more they think that Elphick should be shown red saying that Donaldson had a clear sight of goal if he hadn't been impeded well, seven minutes into the second half, a big moment in the game. And Paul Caddis will take the responsibility for Birmingham. Continuing the dialogue that the shirt pulled by Tommy Elphick should, been, should have been punished by more than just a yellow card. So Caddis, the Scotsman with an opportunity here to throw Birmingham a lifeline. And doesn't that just sum up Birmingham's day as Boric palms it away and keeps it at 3-0. What an opportunity spurned by Malcolm Crosby's side. Arta Boric preserves the clean sheet. And Birmingham's day does not get any better. Eddie Howe, 
bottom of your shot there still with his side at 3-0 up, still urging and gesticulating and wanted more from his team. His captain Tommy Elphick. Still on the field. Here's Mark Pugh down the left-hand side. Bournemouth looking to immediately rub salt into that Birmingham Rooters. Pittman comes in just too high. Game just opening out and stretching a little bit as Birmingham certainly had to come out with something blazing in this second half, even if it's not all guns. The guns they have got. And Novak nearly got himself in trouble. There was a challenge on Novak that's going to produce yet another card. And this time it's Harry Arter who's going to get booked. As Novak was caught fractionally late. Bournemouth are going to make a change themselves here, and Harry Arter having just got booked. Bournemouth not taking any risks with any potential second silly yellows. And he'll be replaced by Dan Gosler. Wholehearted emotional character, Harry Arter, and uh, you can tell from his expression walking off, he thought he was a bit unfortunate. Eddie Howe with his side three to the good, not taking any opportunities to create some silly red card opportunities. Harry Arta does like to certainly go in for his tackles. One ever so slightly mistimed, and that would be a very unnecessary red card. Birmingham have shown fortitude when going down to ten men. I mentioned earlier on they've been down to ten men now in three successive matches, but in the last two against Bolton and Blackburn they've only lost by a 1-0 scoreline in both as Wilson again the flag stays down he'll keep that in is anybody in red and black arriving in the middle now Francis the support oh and then Francis got confused for a second there and played it straight to Novak and a promising opportunity for Bournemouth slips away certainly will have to get themselves reorganised whether they have a new manager in place or not by next weekend because they make the short but uh, passionate trip to Wolverhampton Wanderers next Saturday if there is a new permanent manager in charge by then it would be the likes of Gary Rower or Mike Phelan they'll have certainly a game to get their team up for as Rando has to deal with just a difficult pocket of sunshine there stretching right across his penalty area Just putting grounds under a bit of pressure back inside his own penalty area. And Randolph fires it straight out. Still urging Malcolm Crosby. Keeping some respectability to the performance. 57 minutes gone. Still 3 0 Bournemouth, but Birmingham have seen. A Paul Caddis penalty saved by Arta Boric in this second half already. Talked about Bournemouth's, uh, Birmingham's home form. Well, Bournemouth's away form hasn't been particularly impressive. Had a flying start to the season when they won 4 0 at Huddersfield. Mark Pugh scored in the first minute on the opening day of the season, but they hadn't won away until Bolton last time out on the road that was when Jan Kermigan was sent off which is the reason that he's missing in the third of three game ban today here's the Birmingham number three Jonathan Grounds Riley the half-time substitute poor ball from the Irishman and Bournemouth can get out with Gosling Daniels once again 
gallivanting forward, Caris back pedalling, Daniels into the box. And again, the cross, ultimately the final ball, not having enough quality. Two or three times now we've seen Bournemouth get into excellent wide positions, but the cross has just been overhit. Birmingham attacking throw as Daniels has to clear. Donaldson. And Birmingham not quite on the money with their passing and having to go back inside their own half as Cottrell comes under pressure from Pugh. Cottrell's ball down the right, here's Donaldson. Away from Elphick, away from Sermon. Brings in Grounds, Grounds with an opportunity to shoot low and Boric hangs on and he had to because Novak was sniffing for a rebound. That was a nice build up from Birmingham, one of their best passes to play of the game. Donaldson started it and in the end the low shot from Grounds was well dealt with by Boric. Well, the move that fashioned the penalty and that particular move will give the Birmingham fans at least a little bit of a lift, but the scoreline still says three in Bournemouth's favour as Pugh finds no way through and then Sermon shoots and Randolph makes a good stop. Chances at both ends from distance from the left feet of first grounds and that time Sermon denied by Randolph. And now here's Donaldson away down the right for Birmingham. Novak looking to get in the middle, but not many other blue shirts there. Cottrell, Gosling, fresh legs of the substitute there to cut out that ball. And Cook fires it back at Boric, who does well to clear, and now Gosling can get Bournemouth on the move. Pittman, clipped by Davis, referee plays advantage. Wilson's ball in, and that misses everybody, and through it goes. For Birmingham's two wins in all competitions this season, they won at Millwall, and they also beat Brighton and Hove Albion here at St Andrews. And that's all they've had to show for their season so far which has ultimately cost Lee Clark his job, and we we'll wait to see who comes in. But certainly Birmingham have strung together, as often can be the case when you've got ten men and absolutely nothing to lose. That's a lovely step over from Ritchie to set Francis on the move. Novak desperately tracking back, Francis' ball in is flicked away by Hall. Ritchie with an opportunity again here, right corner. Francis to deliver, back to Ritchie, miscontrolled it, had an opportunity to get on his left. Robinson away, Donaldson fouled by Cook. Long one from Caddis, straight down the middle, met by the head of Elphick. It's going to fall again for Bournemouth, whose numerical advantage always seems to show when the ball drops down into the central areas. They've always got that extra red and black shirt. As again, Richie and Francis double teaming down the right hand side. Francis in towards Pittman, the Pew in the end. Fantastic strike from Mark Pew, and that makes it four. Beautifully floated cross in the end from the right-hand side, and as the ball dropped in that sun trap in the penalty area, Pittman heard the shout from Mark Pugh, and the volley was well directed into the corner of the net beyond Darren Randolph. And 
as a result of that, Bournemouth are going to make another change and give some minutes here to to Kello Ranti, their South African international. Brett Pittman, who scored twice against Reading on Tuesday, and added to that tally today, taking his opportunities in the absence of Jan Kermigant. But on comes Ranti, who now has 25 minutes or so to try and get himself on the score sheet against 10 men. Birmingham from their own kickoff have made a right Horlix of that, an opportunity for Wilson, but the ball was too hit far beyond him. And it's just the glimmers we've seen from Birmingham, and they really have made life so difficult for themselves there from their own kickoff. Within seconds, they've lost the ball. So that fourth goal you wonder from Bournemouth, has that broken the spirit that Birmingham have managed to? At least semi galvanise in this second half. They've got 25 minutes now, and again, there's a possibility that Bournemouth could pour on more misery. Ranty looking to pursue the ball down the right hand side, but in comes Robinson. Gosling having come on as a substitute in central midfield, won't play in many games where he's had this much space, I'm sure. As Pugh finds Francis with a long crossfield ball, but again Gosling with no blue shirts anywhere near him. Pugh comes central. Pugh into the top of the box, Wilson strength, Wilson shot, oh just past the post from Callum Wilson. So the change made by the Blues, Novak off and Kobe Arthur, their youth product on, has just returned from a loan spell with Cheltenham Town. Another ideal situation to come on, 4-0 down with 10 men, but some valuable match minutes back at championship level for young Kobe Arthur. keeps it in brilliantly finds Gosner who beats it Davis in the air Wilson holds it up Richie central Gosling has stayed down Richie ambitious off target Heading to the final quarter then of this Skybet Championship clash. Bournemouth by four goals to nil. Ranty, oh, some lovely feet away from Robinson. That was brilliant skill from the South African. And wins a throw in on the right-hand side. That'll give him some confidence. Gets a little tap of appreciation from his teammate Matt Ritchie. Hasn't hit the goal tra trail quite as uh, Eddie Howe would have liked when they signed him from Malmo to Kello Ranty. Just one so far since February, or sorry, no goal since February, he's only got four in total. And Steve Cook comes up towards the halfway line. Ranty and Francis linking up. Francis looks centrally, the header is there from Pugh again! The Francis-Pugh combination come good, and Mark Pugh has a brace 
and Bournemouth have five. He's a deceptively good header of the ball, Mark Pugh, for a winger. And he rose beautifully there to plant that one beyond Randolph. Another assist for Simon Francis. And you can see in the background quite a few of those home supporters heading for the concourses and ultimately the exits. Birmingham nil, Bournemouth 5. That improves on the four that Bournemouth scored here last season and they're still hunting for more Birmingham blood here. That 4-2 win last season. Reminder, they've never lost here in any competition. Four wins, three draws. We're going to make that five wins and three draws. St Andrews is becoming quite the happy hunting ground for AFC Bournemouth as Pugh is caught. Gosling, though, the out ball to Wilson up against Hall. Support from Ranty just inside, Gosling in the middle, still Wilson goes. And then slips at the crucial moment, just as he was getting set to turn and check it back. Substitution for Portland. Replacing number 13, Wilson. And in fact that slip is Callum Wilson's final action of the afternoon. He's got himself a goal. Hit the post, he's had a couple of opportunities as well. And he will be replaced by Scottish winger Ryan Fraser. Bournemouth fans sing their song of adulation. Callum Wilson, Bournemouth goal machine. But the man from Coventry has come down the road to Birmingham and really has tormented the Birmingham defence. Of course, it was Wilson himself who was pulled back by David Edgar in the seventh minute for that red card. And since then, Wilson has given Birmingham all sorts of problems. We'll be very pleased, I'm sure, to see the back of him. But Ryan Fraser will come on and cause them different kind of problems 19 minutes left Arthur didn't have the physical strength or power there to get himself beyond Francis and Sermon brings it clear Bournemouth will be looking to take this good form into more action against Midlands opponents on Tuesday. They host West Bromwich Albion in the Capital One Cup as Mark Pugh goes through here. The flag stays down. Eventually it goes up. Mark Pugh would have sniffed a hat trick. He's never scored a hat trick in professional football, Mark Pugh. And as he went through there and didn't hear an immediate whistle, I'm sure he might have had a little flicker to say this could be it. But eventually the flag denied him. Here goes Francis again. Gosling's ball over hit. Bournemouth, of course, finished 10th in the championship uh, last season. They've lost their ambitions this season. They, after 13 games last season, they had 16 points. They've already amassed 21 so far this season, so it's been an improved start from Eddie Howe, the second longest serving manager in the championship, looking to close the gap on leaders' derby. Another experienced championship teams at the top end, of course, Watford and Middlesbrough. Norwich coming down for the Premier League as well. It's only Fulham, really, of the relegated teams who are having a really tough time down the bottom end of the table. In fact, they're one of only three teams below Birmingham in the ladder at the moment. Bolton and Blackpool, the current bottom two from the northwest. But 
Bournemouth on their way here to a third straight win and heading for probably fourth place in the table, potentially third. Now 16 minutes away, they lead by five goals to nil here. Here's Pugh again, looking for the turn of Ranty, who under pressure from Robinson has uh, taken a whack to Kello Ranty. Browns will clear it away, but it's a poor clearance. It runs for Fraser, and now Ritchie just outside the penalty. Here. Francis is the underlap, Fraser on the outside, back it comes towards Ritchie, breaks for Pugh, shot blocked. Gosling. Riley was firmly through on Daniels. It's back with Daniels. Ranty's shaken off that knock. And unfortunately, can't shake off the linesman's flag. Arthur looking to get on the ball, the young Birmingham substitute, but his control allowed Gosling to get a challenge in, but Arthur's shaking him off nicely. Nice footwork from Kobe Arthur, does really well. Cottrell. Opportunity to shoot for David Cottrell, he does shoot, and Boric to his left, has to turn it away. Caddis is crossed towards Arthur. Grounds picks it up and then gives it away, and now Bournemouth with a big opportunity on the counter-attack with Mark Pugh. Fraser's on the left, and not a good ball from Pugh. To Warwick's the Bournemouth goalkeeper has had to uh, make three or four important saves at times, including that penalty stop, of course, from Paul Caddis when the score was at 0 3 at the start of the second half. Davis on the halfway line has been on since the 10th minute, of course, when he was brought on as part of Birmingham's reshuffle. Wes Thomas, who have been watching on from the bench, frustrated against his former club that he couldn't do much more than play the first 10 minutes and then find himself as the man sacrificed for the reshuffle. Here comes Daniels once more. Fraser, challenged by Riley, fairly says the referee. And Caddis brings it clear, and a hot pursuit is Daniels. Sticking to his man, and eventually, Judge to have pushed him over. Thirteen thousand eight hundred and thirty-seven. The attendance confirmed here at St Andrews today, and the away following one thousand and ninety-four. As Donaldson's flicking to the penalty area, and those travelling fans behind the goal to our right certainly have been in good voice from very early on. They've been in front since the third minute. Excellent away following, almost eleven hundred from the south coast, and as Birmingham St Andrews crowds continue to dwindle. certainly started to gather themselves a bit of momentum in the chase for the Skybet Championship places as the Arthur puts up pressure on Elphick and Daniels all of a sudden finds two blue shirts in his way and can't clear successfully. Cottrell and Arthur now looking to make something happen for Birmingham, driven in towards Donaldson and Elphick puts it over his own bar. Corner Birmingham.
Cotchell swings it in, the heads go up, Robinson was in there. He picked up on this near side by Hall, who turns away from Fraser with skill not usually befitting of a centre-half, and did really well, and forces the corner off the Scotsman. Cottrell again, this time from the left, and Boric really had to scramble. The ball was whipped in and just started to fade towards the near post and really gave the Bournemouth goalkeeper something to worry about there. But the pole preserved his clean sheet. Another Cottrell corner. Short option this time to Arthur. Poor return ball from Cotswold. Now Ryan Fraser has got the opportunity to show his pace. Ritchie is there, and Pugh's further to the left, and Ranty's ahead of him. Still Ritchie. This is Pugh. Early ball in towards Ranty, headed clear by Davis, who got himself back in the six yard box. Birmingham don't clear convincingly. Fraser finds Francis. Close to ground under the challenge of Cotswold. Penalty! Oh, that looks soft. But Keith Hill has pointed to the spot. Francis, who's physically bigger and stronger than Cottrell, crumpled to the ground on the byline. And the referee has pointed to the spot. And it looks soft. Now Pugh's on a hat trick. Who takes it? Does he get the ball? He's not Bournemouth's normal penalty taker. He's certainly in the vicinity. But Tekelo Ranti has got the ball. And he is taking the opportunity now he hasn't scored since February the best part of eight months so you can see why he is very keen the South African to spot the ball down Mark Pugh's hopes of bagging a hat-trick at the moment have to be put on hold but it's Ranty against Darren Randolph this for six Big moment for Ranty, you can see what it means to him and his teammates. And Bournemouth continue to exert themselves and continue to really stamp Birmingham into the ground here. Six for the Cherries, a goal for Ranty. And you've got a Birmingham fan on the pitch here, which no one wants to see. The opportunity has always been there since the early stages for this to pick up a slightly embarrassing edge for Birmingham City and with eight minutes left as Randolph slips and miscues and the score at six and Birmingham only having ten men there is the opportunity this could get even worse all the Birmingham fans have left a lot of empty seats the ground was only half full in the first place. But credit to those Birmingham fans who have stuck it out at the moment. The easy option, certainly, at nil six, would be to go and find something better to do for your Saturday afternoon. But those fans are staying loyal at the moment. I don't think you'll find too many of the almost 1,100 travelling support from the south coast making their way home just yet. They'll be milking this for everything they can. Bournemouth are quite the force when they get moving forward, with runners seemingly left, right and centre. Francis leads another attack. And a chance for the Cherries fans now is we want seven. Mark Pugh. Away from a couple of challenges, did well to find Gosling. He threads in Matt Ritchie. Richie sticks one in, headed clear by Robinson. Gosling fires it in, and Pugh! And there is the hat trick! Mark Pugh! Bournemouth have seven, and a first professional hat trick from Mark Pugh. 
Well, he didn't put up too much protest when Tekelo Ranti took the penalty a moment ago. And I guess you could say that Pugh's emotions in that situation have paid dividends because his chance came and he took it into the top corner. And the popular winger has a professional hat trick. Four and a half years with the Cherries. The princely sum of £100,000 he cost them. And he will be taking the match ball home on a memorable afternoon for Bournemouth. 7 0. Which now ties their biggest ever Football League win, which came over Swindon all the way back in 1956. And they're hungry for more. It's Gosling. The Blues just have enough shirts back there to counter that threat. And now Arthur goes the other way. No one with him. Well, Paul from Gosling with options on. There's absolutely no let up here for Birmingham. Every time Bournemouth get the ball, they're not running the clock down. They are looking to pile it on and add to that scoreline. Just a week ago, of course, Bournemouth's neighbour Southampton managed to score eight against Sunderland. Can they possibly match that? They've got an opportunity to break again here with Ranty. And Fraser's going through it. Here's Ryan Fraser, and he slots it against the post. So close to eight. Richie. Ranty! This time it is eight. Incredible. Elation for Bournemouth, and I'm afraid for Birmingham, utter embarrassment now. 8-0. And a new high for Bournemouth, they've never scored eight goals in a league game before. Ranty's come off the bench, he's got two, Pugh's got three, to add to the first half strikes from Pittman, Wilson and Ritchie. There are still three minutes to go. Surely not double figures. The offside flag goes up. And those Bournemouth chants of We Want Seven a moment ago have been replaced by We Want Nine. got to feel sorry for Malcolm Crosby and Richard Beale, tasked with holding the baby if you like after Lee Clark's tenure came to an end on Monday the likelihood is that Gary Rowett or, or Mike Phelan or somebody else will be in place by the time they go to Wolves next Saturday and that he's been to an FA Cup final one of the highs of his career despite losing that one to Liverpool of course as Gosling has a chance to make it nine and Randolph blocks it once and then twice and Grounds hacks it away so close to being nine. Well, Darren Randolph, the Birmingham goalkeeper, was guilty of giving the ball away cheaply for Callum Wilson's goal earlier on, but he kept some. Well, a modicum of respectability on the score. I don't think you can say an 8 0 score is respectable, but nine really is heading into the realms of an absolute disaster. I think this afternoon will go down as a disaster, though, as far as Bournemouth are concerned, as far as Birmingham are concerned, as Pew is caught there by Riley. It's certainly an afternoon that Mark Pugh won't forget. Down from the northwest from Lancashire. Hopefully, these friends and family have made the trip down from the northwest as the shot comes in. And an opportunity again, this time for Fraser and Randolph. This time with a more comfortable save to keep the score at eight. Well, 
Well, whatever the future with as far as Birmingham's management situation goes, the rebuilding job is clear. Stayed up only on goal difference in the championship at the end of last season. It's going to be a tough fight. They're slipping further into trouble with this result today. It's their goal difference will take a hammering. Bournemouth, meanwhile, careering up into the playoff positions in the championship. Not only careering up into the playoff positions, but sending out a bit of a message as well. Yes, they've played ten men for almost the entire game. But when you score eight, that makes people notice. And the likes of Derby and Watford and Middlesbrough at the top end of the table will know that Bournemouth mean business. Can Birmingham get themselves some sort of consolation? Arthur was completely isolated. The four, minutes. four minutes added. Still more time for Bournemouth to pour it on further. Donaldson. What a lone battle he's faced up top since his strike partner Wes Thomas was sacrificed early on. Did win a penalty for his side early in the second half, which was missed by Cadiz. Cook clears it away. And Francis will continue to make those runs down the right. Richie. Branty. He's on a hat trick all of a sudden now, don't forget. He could sniff it, Francis. Richie will shoot. Tame. It's the one goal for him so far. Made it 3 0. Feels like a long time ago now. Bournemouth have added five goals in this second half. Look at the stands, just a, a scattering of blue supporters left now. We've only seen one championship win here at St Andrews in 388 days, make that 389 days. And not only not a win, but an absolute trouncing. And here's Ranty, opportunity for him again, and this time it's Cannon behind the four. Richie's corner. Francis to swing another cross in. Headed behind for another flag kick. Sermon to Richie. Nice ball inside the penalty. Richie will shoot. Lost his standing foot just as he did so. Tried to wrap his left foot around it, but on slipping, sailed way off target. Just over a minute left of the added time. Caddis, drop away from his man, Cotterell, Paul Robinson's a very experienced character, the Birmingham captain, I'm not sure he'll have been involved in too many games like this in his career, a centre-half in a team that concede eight, albeit he lost his centre-half partner David Edgar very early on to that red card as Francis clears it away. For the final few seconds, a look at the watch from referee Keith Hill. And Keith Hill brings a miserable afternoon for Birmingham to a close. 
but a record-breaking one for AFC Bournemouth. Their biggest winning margin in a league game, surpassing a 7-0 success against Swindon in 1956. It's the first time they've scored eight goals in a league game. And Birmingham, after that seventh-minute sending off of David Edgar, found themselves absolutely trounced.